Uh, so very emotional at times. That's good. So do I. Uh, we're on Preston New Road and uh, people are still sitting on the Green Monday just over there. I've come up to the nightcap shelter because it started to rain because I wanted to get an interview. Um, with you know, We do time to time do interviews at the side of the road with interesting characters. And Roland and I have been sharing space on this road but we've not really had the chance to chat. And I know that you'd be an interesting character and someone who I've been so warm with since we've been here. But I don't really know where you're from or what your story is or, or any of that stuff. So... Where do you travel from to be here? Torquay. Torquay? Yeah. It's a heck of a distance, Roland, to travel. Yes. And, and so how often do we manage to have you and how long for? I came to Fortnite in July and I just had to come back. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you say you had to come back, what is it that makes you feel you had to? The people here, yourself. Yeah, yeah. And when you think about it, when you go back to Torquay... Um, is your mind because I know for a lot of it, it's very hard to turn off from I this, don't know what will happen when I get back yeah no but I mean have you taken breaks since have I have you taken a break home since you arrived you've been home since getting no, here no 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 you... I've been here for another two weeks oh my goodness so you spent the entire summer with us I always assumed you must have taken a break at some point well as I say I went I came in July for a fortnight yeah. then I went home yeah and felt I've got to come back Okay. Yeah. And I'm leaving on Wednesday. Oh, that'll be a shame to lose you. Yeah. So when you came, what was it that got you here in the first place? Had you already been part of the anti-fracking movement or? Just, I've been reading about it for years. Yeah. I remember reading about it 30, 35 years ago in the yeah. States. Yeah. When they were saying that there's lots of shale oil and gas. Yeah. But they just couldn't get to it. Yeah. They did. Yeah, then they found a new way, like yeah. the straw in the bottom of your milkshake, isn't it? And yeah. Well, before all that, before you, um, what was your life before you were this? I was. I finished off. I'm an engineer by trade. All right. But my wife and I fostered difficult teenagers for yeah. about 15 years. Oh wow. And then I was working at ITT. Yeah. In Paynton making pacemakers and missile garden systems. Right. <laughs> Which I wasn't very happy with. Yeah. Then I was made redundant. So I was out. I didn't... Yeah. They, they cancelled the pacemakers because various political reasons. Yeah. So we were just doing missile garden systems. Yeah. So when I was out, I was... Yeah. Happy about that. Yeah, I bet you. I then went into probation. All right. And I was working in probation. And having dealt with difficult teenagers, you must have had good skills for that. Yeah. Yeah. I was in Torquay and you know it, office. And I was working there until I had a massive coronary in 95. Right. I was off for quite a while and thought, I don't want to go back. Mm. So I went to Exeter to see the chief and chatted and he said, if you don't want to come back, that's fine. You need to see the medical officer and we'll pension you off. So they did. That was in 90, end of 95. So in 96, I went to live in France and met a lady, a French lady. Had a wonderful 10 years together. She died. Oh. So I stayed for another four years. In France? Yeah. And thought, come back. I yeah. couldn't. My life was like that. Yeah. So I came back. I've got four children in the UK. Professor of Molecular Biology, believe it or not. Oh, wow. In, in London. He's got his own lab. Fantastic. My daughter, who took her PhD in biology, she's now teaching. A second daughter works in Birmingham with uh, blind, uh, blind deaf people. Yes. Blind deaf girls, I should yes. say. Yes. My, so my so second son works in Liverpool. He's a uh, he took a degree in forestry. 
and he's growing fruit, nuts and cereals all on one patch. Yeah. Which looks after itself. Yeah. It's got big trees to yeah. stop the wind. Yeah. Nitrogen feeders into yeah. the ground and no maintenance. Yeah. And he just, really it's a skill, isn't it? And it's an yeah. old skill, but we seem to have lost a lot of our own oh, our yes. old skills, yeah. 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 Are you, how do your children feel about you doing this life? At my age, they're worrying, of course. How old are you? Am I allowed to ask? 81. 81, yeah. yeah. I was 81 when I came in July. Yeah. My, I had my birthday. Ah, <laughs> I think I remember singing happy birthday. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So they support it, but they're worried about your health. Do they understand about fracking? Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. And so they support the cause. My oldest daughter doesn't. She's yeah. Married a true blue. <laughs> Every and family's got one. <laughs> if the government wants it, it must be good. Yes. It's a strange way of thinking, <laughs> it's, isn't oh, it? Oh, my it's, Yeah, it's that if, if someone in authority says it's right, it must be. Why? We've seen them lie time and again, know. you know. It Man. astounds me when you think of how much we're, we're so used to government lies and proving yes. it. She was saying that the police are doing a legitimate job protecting legitimate companies and you're protesting oh dear but well, at least the others get me. it yeah that's the yeah, main I'll thing that's the, the main thing life, yeah right. we'll be sad when you go home so it'll be hard to we'll miss you but i expect it'll be good to, I mean, in Torquay. do you have family there as well no 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 maybe you should just relocate come live up preston new road with us i i like Torquay. all the yeah. children were born in brixton yeah oh lovely and it's well lit. I, yeah. I wouldn't want to move. Unless yeah. I moved up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That may happen. I may decide to and move. We should up get you here. a camper van and turn you into a full time activist. Yes, it you're inspiring what, on the road. What happens here? Yeah. I think we'll win. I'm sure we will. As someone said to me, you know, what do you do if you lose? I'm like, well, what does losing look like? We just don't stop until it's over. You know, we're here to the end. So, yeah, I know. Know. Absolutely. Yeah, so what do you think it is that, because, uh, I mean, most people at 81 are not going to choose to get up from, you know, safe life and come here. What do you think it is that made you do that? What, what you know, is we all read it, but, you know, not, not everyone stands up. My way of life, I suppose. I, I love nature. And this is so, so bad. Yeah. I just... I was at uh, Upton, Upton Moss. Upton, yeah. I Barton there Moss and Upton, two different places, and yeah. I went home. And then my son phoned me and said, they're asking for dry socks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're sick of living in wet socks. <laughs> <laughs> so Ma said, I'm going to tour around town and get some good socks here. So I went up to Liverpool. Yeah. Bought 70 pairs of socks. Oh my god! <laughs> and half a dozen hats. <laughs> and we took them to the site. Wow. Well, I bet and they, they were, were deeply appreciated, well yeah. Tell you a trick for putting in those socks, though, is if you put um, bicarbonate of soda in them when you put them on for the day. It oh, helps right. with things like, because I know that sometimes they get athlete's foot or they call it trench foot, don't they? Yeah. When they're walking in the wet too much. Um, but if you put a uh, bicarbonate soda in the socks, it oh, helps avoid that. It's doing. antibacterial too, yeah, so that works well. But uh, yeah, but so again though, but not everyone will choose to do this. And so the fact that you love nature, again, I know a lot of 80 year olds who love nature and understand the threat, but still they're not coming. So there must be some sort of a lion heart in you that drives you. It was, it was the feeling for people here. Yeah. And it up to Yeah. The dedication. Yeah. I wanted to be part of it. Yes. There is that sense. It's like I always say, we sacrifice a lot to do this. Yeah. But I would never swap the gains I've had. And that's the people I'm surrounded by. It's the living and, living and being every day amongst people who live a life of purpose, yes. who don't put themselves first, who aren't talking about what next thing they're going to buy. Yeah, I that, you know, There's no small talk, no wasted conversations. No, no. You know, conversation is about the things that matter or just to support each other. Yeah. yeah. 
and it's the diversity too I think you know the fact that you know when would you and I have met you know and we meet people in this movement that we would never have encountered in our regular lives because we moved in different circles you know yeah. but this one thing that unites us is very beautiful yeah yeah, yeah. yes so if you had to explain to your daughter the one who's married a true blue why you won't be giving up what would you in a, maybe in a sentence why will you not give up I, I didn't bother I couldn't be bothered yeah yeah. I couldn't possibly. No. But in yourself, what is your... So are you in this to, to the end, really? Oh, yeah. I should be here until... Yeah. Well, other than nipping until... hope. But yeah, yeah. Until we're done with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How much risk is there in Torquay? I can't remember. I think you were a fairly... I can't remember. But I don't think you've got licensing there. I think you'd fall off if they tried to drill into Torquay. Say again, sorry. Uh, Torquay. I don't know what it is with licences there. I can't remember off the top of my head. It is fracking licences. There's none in Devon. There. Yeah, I think and Devon. Cornwall's yeah, Devon and Cornwall. Yeah. I thought were. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I'm sure I'll get a correction on my live stream if they're not. But I, I vaguely remember them being okay. So we'll see. Yeah. In the meantime, over here, all of the dedicated people are still sitting. Well, at least a lot of them. In the rain. In the rain. Yeah. So where are you staying? You've got somewhere to stay. In St Anne's. In St Anne's. Lovely. Yeah. Good. Rain okay. Rain. So you're keeping your health and you're you're managing to. Still stay well through this. Yeah. I just keep taking my tablets. <laughs> you keep taking the tablets very and much. I'm on my second phase, maker. I oh yeah, my God, at the air. But it must be brilliant because I mean, how long has it been since your heart attack? I mean, that's been one on over a decade. Yeah, well, nearly ninety-five. Jesus time. Christ, that's two decades. So Twenty odd years. Here. Wow, that's a really. Good. Well, so that was the, with the pacemaker, but of course you knew all about pacemakers. I, I had a double bypass, and then when Claudine, my lady, died in October ninety, October two thousand six. Yeah. <coughs> I wasn't feeling so good, and saw my uh, cardiologist in Limoges. Yeah. And he said. I don't like walking in. He said, a bit late now. I'll put you a pacemaker in tomorrow. Is <laughs> she? <laughs> and so you put another one in? No, that was the first one. That was the first one. And then after I came back to England, I was going back to France every six months. Yeah. And the batteries ran low, which is what happens. Yeah. So they put another one in. Right. And that's the one I've got. And how often do they have to be changed? Six, seven years. Oh, right. Okay. Quite like a decent battery in. life. Yeah. So much talk about Tesla about that. Yeah. Whether I should get one in this country, I don't know. Yeah. Whether I'm on the do not resuscitate list. Oh, God forbid. <laughs> We'd be so lost without you. You have another 20 years left in you at least. You should have at least another 10 battery changes if we have it our way. So, so if there's any delay or suggestions of delay when it needs changing, so I can monitor it with the value of the strength of the battery. Yeah. Which go into a little book. Ah. So when it starts getting low, I shall ask. Yeah. And if they say, well, there's a 12 month waiting list, yeah. I shall just go to France. Yeah. And yeah. Back to Limoges. Yeah. And go to the cardiologist and tell him the story. Yeah. I just suppose that works while we're still in and Europe. He'll, he'll give me Will it change one. once we leave Europe? Your ability to access the medical care in France? Yes. Yeah. With the nas national. Yeah, insurance. that's right, because, yeah, insurance. I used to live in Spain, and my mum used medical care there, I had just national health there, and it was brilliant, it was like amongst the best care oh, I'd ever seen. It is. Yeah, she had a heart attack in Spain, and I mean, she's passed away now, but when she was there, it was amazing, the, the care she yeah. got was incredible. Everybody yeah. pays insurance. Yeah. And there's a bottom of the Yeah, them. yeah. They want to get you into their hospital, and... Once you're there, they really look at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Hi, right, Roland. It's really good to have you at the roadside. And I hope you don't do too many hours at once because I see you constantly. And I worry that you, you overdo it. But I, I, now I've met you, I don't feel that we need to worry about you overdoing it. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I think you're feisty and I think you I'm, go on. For many years, I've been, I was told, listen to your body. Yes. And I do. Yeah, very wise. And I'm still here. And you're so loved by the night camp people and everybody else on the road you are such a loved person and it's so good that you're amongst us and you've got to say that you know for all the ugly this fight is we have each other 
And that's yeah, everything. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Rob. The roadside at PNR. Thank you.